our uh, conversation with the Department of Physics. And in fact, for generations of students at MIT, physics is always associated with the name of Professor Walter Lewin. He is one of MIT's uh, lecturing treasures. And I, I do not say that lightly. He is a brilliant lecturer, as you'll see. And when people talk about physics at MIT, Walter Lewin's name comes first to mind. I'm very happy that he's here today to talk with you about some of his interests in physics. And the title of his presentation is How to Make Teaching Come Alive. And I think you'll see that in a, in a very dramatic way this morning. Walter, welcome back again as another uh, return visit with the science teachers at MIT. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. So this is not going to be a talk about the frontiers of physics that you were exposed to this morning, but it is something about our daily experiences, about the world that we all know so well. And these experiences that we have, some of them can be quite wonderful, quite exciting. When you see a rainbow, when you see a sunset, I think we would all agree that that can be very beautiful. However, there is more to it. There is more to it than this beauty that all of us can see, and that is what I call the hidden beauty. It is the beauty of understanding. It is the beauty of knowledge. And it is our task, your task as teachers, and my task as a teacher, to get that beauty across. In fact, not only a task, it is your obligation. Now, we all love rainbows, and as scientists, we are so privileged that we can appreciate why the bows are there in the first place. We understand the color sequence, at least we should understand them. And we also understand why sometimes you see dark bands in the rainbow. And we understand why the bows are strongly polarized. And in fact, when I see a rainbow, I always take my own personal polarizer and I check to make sure that the bows are indeed polarized because it's almost as if I'm afraid that someday they may not be polarized anymore <laughs> and that physics won't work. And after today, now that you have your own linear polarizer, I expect you will do the same. For teaching has always been one of the greatest and most satisfying experiences in my life. And it is through the wonders of teaching that we can reveal the hidden beauty to our students. Knowledge does not narrow. Knowledge only adds. And without knowledge, many experiences in life remain very narrow and very shallow. And that includes an appreciation for art. Now, today I want to talk about our daily experiences, at least some of them. And I will start with color. Ask the question, what are colors and when do we see colors? Now, these questions can probably best be answered by a philosopher, but I, as a physicist, will make a modest attempt. Imagine the sun is out, we have curtains, I make a hole through the curtains, and I let the sunlight in. And I take a prism, and with that prism, I decompose the sunlight in colors. Light is an electromagnetic phenomenon, electromagnetic waves, and we know that there are short wavelengths and there are long wavelengths. The long wavelengths, the red part of the spectrum, and the short wavelengths are the blue end of the spectrum. And so now you might think that the wavelengths of light exclusively determines its color. For instance, when I show you light with very short waves, you might think that you will see blue light, violet light. And when I show you light with very long wavelengths, you may think that you will see red light. And that is often the case, but not always. As a start, we all know that you can produce all the colors that you want to by mixing light, mixing the light of the so-called three primary colors. We call that additive mixing, not to be confused with subtractive mixing, which is the mixing of paint. I'm talking about additive mixing, mixing of light. I can mix red light with green light, and I can make you see yellow light, even though the wavelength of yellow is not present. So this is the whole idea about color TV, which use three electron guns, and your computer monitors operate in that same way. Let's look a little closer at the 
three primary colors of additive mixing. And I'll show you a slide of what we call the color triangle. And this color triangle, in a way, is a recipe for how you can make these various colors using the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. So here you see, at the three corners of this triangle, you see red, green, and blue, red here, green at the top, and you see blue at the other corner. And I will make here a poor man's version of the same triangle, very schematically. Oh, no, it should really be more of a triangle, like this. And so we have the, the green here, and we have the red here, and, ooh, ooh, and we have the blue here. Now suppose we want to make yellow, which you see here. So that's this point here. Then what you do, you put in this much red, away from the red from this point to the other corner, and you put in this much green, and then you will see yellow. If you make this color here, which would be some greenish blue, you draw three lines from the three corners. One, two, three. And you put in this much red, and you put in this much green, and you put in this much blue. And you'll get that color. And so you see, we will even be able to make something that looks very close to white light by mixing the three primary colors to the right ratio. And that's what is the basis behind your color TV. I have here a little box, and in that little box I have three light bulbs, red, green, and blue. And I can make an attempt to mix some uh, colors for you. So here comes the red. Is that where it is? Yeah, that should be red. And I can change the intensity a little. And here is the blue, and here is the green, and I can change the intensity. Now suppose I make green and red. Oh, already it looks pretty yellow. It's a little bit a matter of taste, but you see I only have green and red, so I'm operating there on the right side here, and I'm seeing now yellow. I can also make purple for you. So this is now, we're now somewhere here, and I can also go to the purple side, so I only have blue and red. See, this is the blue. Uh-oh, too many. I really am the green. So this is the blue and the red. we we'll mix that a little, and I can make it nice purple. And you guessed it already. You turn them all three on, and you change a little bit intensities, and you come close to white even. So now we are somewhere here. So I put a mixture in of these three colors. And so this is something that is boring. of no interest to you, and you didn't come here to learn about the color triangle. Now there's something, comes something that may surprise you, something that you may never have heard of, and something that is not covered in physics textbooks. And that is that you can actually see colors using only black and white almost only black and white. And what I want to show you now is a very famous demonstration which was done in the early 50s by Edwin Land. The phenomenon was known before Edwin, but he really pushed the issue very hard. He gave me personally two slides. They're both black and white. You will see them very shortly. And they are slides of exactly the same scene. One of these slides he took through a red filter, so in front of the camera was a red filter. But gee, man, it's a black and white slide, so there's no red on the slide, of course. Both slides are black and white. And I'm going to show them to you. 
To do that, I have to walk back. We're, con we're continuing.